Hello and welcome to another Blender t Know How tutorial. <clears throat> Today we're going to learn how to uh, do a physics simulation with text. Uh, so it's going to be combining a few different things. And actually, uh, I, I'm going to kind of show you how to use different uh, fonts too. So that's kind of cool. So and it's going to look something like that, just something simple, something where the text falls and you see the physics. Something super simple. So. Uh, yeah, go ahead and open up Blender. Uh, let's start. Let's go to the front view by hitting 1. Let me turn on screencast keys real quick. Okay, now you can kind of see what I'm doing down here. So, uh, delete the cube. Make sure you're in the front view. Uh, hit Shift A and then go to text and then down here in the bottom left corner hit a line to view uh, zoom in a little bit uh, tab into edit mode and I'm gonna put blender know how you can put whatever you want and then I'm gonna hit 5 on the keyboard oh not 5 tab and then hit 5 uh, that makes it so it's the flat view I'm gonna go back to hit 1 on the keyboard it has to be on the numpad actually so I'm going to go up to the font tab and I'm going to pick my font that I had and I I have it I'm going to do great users and then I put I have it in my downloads I think So I'm just going to pick my font real quick. Uh, hopefully I can see it real quick. Oh, yep. Okay, this is the one that I picked last time. Okay. And you can pick whatever font you want. Just go on the internet, download them. I think there's actually a really good one. A uh, good website with uh, this gonna show you this this is called font space a whole bunch of free fonts that are for commercial use and uh, for personal use I th most of I think they even say so if, so this one says a personal use only you just gotta watch out and I'll only get the right one so but that's a good little website for you and it, if nothing else if you choose it for personal education you should be good so okay so now I'm gonna go back in here and I'm going to turn down the preview because it really doesn't make that big of a difference to about 6 or 7. So I'm going to turn it to 7. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, the font stuff the same. I'm going to go into off, not offset, leave offset as 0, extrude, and put that to like 0.2. And you can hover around and see what that looks like, but I think that's about right. Uh, go depth and the bevel. Uh, I like a little bit of bevel. You don't have to. It's just my personal opinion. And if you want it to be round, you increase its resolution. But I almost like the flat look. I think that looks nice. So I'm going to leave it there. Uh, and everything else is good. So now what you do is, because if we go into tab, we can just edit the text. That's about it. So we want to now convert that to a mesh. And now we have a whole bunch of points when we go into edit mode but that's not what we want either so go back into edit mode hit control uh, I don't think you have to have them all selected but you probably should just in case and then hit P into separate by loose parts and then you click on that give it a minute okay and then hit tab and now you have a whole bunch of loose parts and this is depending on the font you get it may work better but with the font that I picked, there's a whole bunch of separate pieces to each letter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to select and then hit Control J, deselect, select, Control J, and sometimes see how it says active object is not selected in the mesh. Select it first, select one part of it, select the whole thing, Control J, select one part whole thing, control J, one part, 
whole thing, control J, and so on. So I'm just going to finish this. I should have probably picked something smaller, but that's okay. Okay, and then move each letter. So just hit right click on the letter, hit G, move it, and then right click to put it back where it was at. Just to check, make sure there's no loose pieces. Oh, see, I found one for me. If you do, just select it again and do the same thing. Just do it over again, and you'll be fine. There you go. Because you don't want any loose pieces. Okay. Now, we have all these separated. But, problem is, is each of their origins, see this little dot, that's an origin point. Each of them are right there. So the physics is actually going to be at that dot. Which is not what we want. So, select all of them and go to set origin origin to geometry now if you look at it each of the origins are in the center or yeah like the center of the geometry so and it, it, it approximates it by doing stuff so now we can start setting up a little bit of the environment so that we can have physics uh, collision. So I'm just going to set up a, a little room for our blender know-how to be in. So I just made a box and I'm positioning the box and I'm also going to hit Z so I can see through it. And then I'm also going to hit Control alt 0 in the front view to place the camera uh, right where you're at. So now the camera is looking right at the text. So if you hit zero, you can go to the camera. If you hit, while you're in camera, or while you have the camera selected, if you hit G, and middle mouse button, and move it up, it, you'll zoom, kind of. It'll move the camera closer this way. So now I'm also going to make it a little bit more depth. Because if we were to go back into this mode, the camera is on the outside of the box. So I want to make sure the camera is on the inside of it. And then I'm also going to place uh, add, oh, yeah, add mesh and then a plane. And I want this, so go back into 7, Z. I want this to cover the floor. And the reason why I have to add the plane is it doesn't recognize the inside of the box very well. So with the physics. So I'm going to actually place the floor down a little bit so we can get some falling action from each of these. And then I'm going to right click on the B because we're only going to get the B to work right now. And we're going to go to the physics panel, go rigid body, and leave everything as it is. You can change stuff, but it works right now and it works pretty well. Uh, you can increase the friction and the bounciness. That's pretty much uh, what you want to adjust if you were to adjust because those are the only things that you can notice that are really seen from the eye. And then click on, make sure you get the floor selected and go back into the camera view, hit rigid body, take off dynamic and I think you can leave this convex hole so let's see what happens. It's only going to work with the B though right now, just remember that. So go ahead and hit Alt A and the B interacts with the floor just as planned. Okay, so now the question is, is oh, well, the rest of it's not going to work. Do we have to do that for all of them? No, you don't actually. So uh, now make sure that your B is the first one you select and then select the rest of them and then go to physics oh, here on the left Actually, you didn't have to have the B selected first. Now if you hit shift, you want to select it the last. That's what it is. 
Uh, even if it's selected already, if you hit shift and right click, it'll make it active. So that's what you want. And then hit copy from active. And now all of them have it applied to them. So now hit control, uh oh, I hit the wrong button. Uh, control A. And oh, I must have selected the environment just a minute. Let me just delete. Uh, okay, now it'll work. I, I put the physics to the background. And now they fall. That's pretty much the gist of it. I'm actually I'm gonna show you a little bit of uh tips to make it look a little bit nicer because I mean it's just it's just physics right now. That's pretty much all you're seeing. So what I'm gonna do, make sure you're in cycles. Uh, I'm gonna escape the animation and then I'm going to hit shift A. Actually no, right here, there's a lamp right here. Move it over to the corner. I'm in the top view right now. And go to spot. And you can see it's pointing this way. I want to hit R to rotate. Point this median li med middle line uh, towards the text and increase the size a little bit. Probably to 106 uh, degrees ish. Somewhere. Let's try that. And then I'm in the right view now. And I'm going to make sure that this is pointed to the text again because I want the highlight to be the text. And with this, I'm in the top view one, one more time. I want to talk about this, but I, I put this on this closest point because I, I kind of want that. I, this is just a tip, but like if I want, I want this first letter to be stand out because it's easier to read, and I, I think I think that's more what I want. So, and you can do whatever you want, but that's what it works. So. Now if I hit Alt A, and then I'm going to pause it somewhere right here where the physics is now acting. Uh, I'm going to hit F12. Oh, must have not. Let's hit 1. Oh, look, the box. I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to pull up the box so that it is above the lamp. Okay, now go back into it. object mode, camera, F12. Haha, uh -huh. now we have light. Uh, quick tip with light is it actually looks better. So if you hit use nodes and change this to a uh, slight yellow, it, it looks a little bit nicer if you don't always use white. It just it, it's more pleasing to the eye. And I increased this strength to probably 200. And uh, I'm also, I'm actually going to move that over here like this. You can do whatever you want. I'm quickly doing this. Increase the size of that. Okay, let's see. I'm actually now before I render again, I'm hit shift D, move the move it over here, rotate it and do the same thing. But I'm now going to change this to a blue. Now these complementary, well they're not complementary, these opposing, because <laughs> on the color wheel right here, actually they might be complementary, but right here, <laughs> on this color wheel it makes it look complementary, but those are actually just, it's red, yellow, and blue, so <laughs> right here would be the complementary. This would be the complementary right here. But I'm just going to throw in a little bit of a blue. It, it would probably look a little bit better with this purple. Actually, I'm going to try a little purple. Because this color was a little bit distorted. Looks like. Actually, no. Because this is the blue. So, you have red, yellow, and blue. It's a little weird, but anyway. Um, and so I have a, a yellow, a blue, and then to tone it down, because those are going to have a little bit of, I, or to, I wouldn't initially tone it down, but the colors look nicer this way. I, I, it's hard, I don't know how to explain it, but now if I hit render, actually before I do that, the red, because it's, it's a power color, and I don't want it to be overpowered by the red, I'm going to decrease that to 100. And 
now you have Blender know-how. And for better renders, you can come in here to where to go sampling and increase this render. You can increase as big as you want. I'm gonna do a hundred so I can get a quick render real quick. And hopefully that's hopefully that's what you're looking for. Alrighty, that's our tutorial. You can change the color of each one of these letters if you want. And you can animate it with the with this. Instead of just rendering it, you can animate it. And we'll watch the, the animation. Alrighty, thank you. We'll see you.